This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. Inside of every synagogue and every Beit Midrash, there is a spark from the holy temple after the destruction or in the time of the destruction. So all the holy sparks of our holy house, of the holy temple, been spread out to the world that the world will stay in balance. When the temple was built, so the balance was different. There was a center to the universe and people would always come to Jerusalem. And not only the Jewish nation would come, the Jewish were obligated to come in the holy days. But also, like in the days of King Solomon, in the days of Shlomo HaMelech, so also the king of all the nations were coming to visit and to see the beauty of that inspiring building and they could all feel and sense the, the spirit, the divine spirit of the Shekhinah Kedusha. So all the nations would come and would be blessed in that central point of the universe in Jerusalem, in the temple, in the holy house of the Creator. Now after the destruction, so the Creator had to keep that balance that the world will keep on blessing. So he spread those sparks, those holy sparks that were all standing in one point in Jerusalem and everyone would come and receive from that light and, and from that bounty. But now because of the destruction, the Creator had to spread those sparks because people wouldn't have the reason to come and visit Jerusalem and to, there was nothing left after the horrible destruction. So he had to spread all those sparks around the world and in those places that he put those sparks in, people came after years, hundreds of years, thousands of years and built synagogues and holy places for learning, centers and Bate Midrashot, but not only Bate Midrashot, because also the houses of the believers, of the people that are seeking for faith, people that are working on, on their relationships and having peace between them and, and, and giving charity and supporting the poor. So their homes become to be also centers for grace and for kindness and for charity. So where all of that bounty comes from? from those holy sparks of the Creator, that He hid those sparks underground in those places. And you drive one day with your car and you say, Oh, I want to live in this neighborhood. I feel like I want to buy that house. And you don't know that the Creator is putting that in your heart because He found you worthy. Because He saw in you that you have the ability to run His fortune, to use His treasures those spiritual sparks and He gives people the ability to enjoy from those spiritual sparks those ones that He <coughs> was hiding in the days of destruction. And then people are just getting into that house and getting into those places and building places that will make other people happy, healthy, strong, protected, no matter what, every good quality that there is in the world and people are enjoying. What is the test? The test is to remember that it's not you that is spreading all of that bounty. It's only that the Creator gives you the merit to run things for Him, to do things for Him. But not only in properties, not only in money, it's also spiritually. When you find that inside of your soul there is an inner spring of wisdom, of knowledge, of understanding, all kinds of talents that you receive, that you have abilities, that you can play in, on the guitar like, like a professional, that you know how to, to play the piano. All kinds of talents are blessings and gifts that we receive from heaven. They are not ours. And that's why the main challenge of a person is to learn how to express himself. 
The main challenge is that the person will use his qualities and his talents to serve the Creator with them. Because you received them for a purpose. So if you know that you know how to break dance, okay, so you say, oh, wow, what I'm going to do with that talent? It's crazy. Huh? How can I also serve Hashem and also do my thing, be in my zone? I, I know how to break dance. I, for me, I take off my jacket. Again, I'm going to take off my jacket. I'm going to take off my jacket. I'm going to start break dancing. So why, wh wh how, why Hashem gave me that talent? Why Hashem gave me that ability? Why in the world that the Creator will use use me for Him with something that for sure, that's how it seems to us, in our eyes, doesn't come from the zone of purity, from the zone of holiness. It's who are those break dancers? It's people from the streets, people from the neighborhoods, people that are using drugs, that are not so much into serving the Creator, learning Torah. So it, it sounds like something foreign. I'm into nature, I love hiking, I love the rivers, I love geography, I love the world, I like to taste wines. Okay, every single thing that you can think of, there is a side to say that it's a physical thing, that it's a foreign thing, that it's belong to outside of the Kedusha zone, of the pure zone. But it's not the truth. When the redemption will take place in the world, we will see with our own eyes that there is life inside of every particle of the creation and you can dance for Hashem, even break dance. All kinds of dancing, all kinds of music. It's such a huge picture that there is a place in that huge picture to every one of us. And the picture won't be complete without those foreign, foreign, so far, far away tribes, of savages, of people that you cannot even see the connection between them to humanity. You don't understand. They're still hunting. They're still dragging their wives from the hair to the, to the, the tents, the houses that built out of mud and waste of animals and things that you say, hey, what's going on? You don't know what's going on. The fact that you cannot see the connection the fact that you cannot see those spiritual links that are building that amazing building, that it's the complete creation, doesn't mean that it's not all one. That it's not all built under that amazing individual supervision, so precise and perfect supervision of the Creator to make every single thing perfect into the complete picture of creation. And He knows the answers to all of our questions. He's the one that knows how to bring you to breathe a certain air in a certain weather that will be good for your health. And He gives you certain drinks and food that contain certain sparks that will feed you and nurture your body. And you don't know how many sicknesses or illnesses you won already, you beat, you defeated <coughs> by eating certain fruits. You walk in the street, Suddenly you have that crazy thought about an apple and you don't know why. You feel like you must have an apple and you go just breaking to the right into that first grocery store and you take three and you don't know why. You can eat only one but you take three. The most beautiful ones, the most red ones, the most shiniest ones and you just took them and you pay and you don't need the, the, the change and you just go with your treasure and you just eat one on the street and the second one you're going to eat in the office and the third one in the evening you're feeding yourself and you don't know that you defeated cancer tonight, for an example. You don't know. Every person in his body, he's got cells of cancer, cancer cells. Those cells are running in the system and you don't know. But your body is strong enough most of the time to defeat those cells and to cancel cancer. It's in the power of the food that you're eating when you're aware to yourself, when you're listening to the voice of Hashem. And you can defeat and beat so many illnesses and so many weaknesses and also spiritual things. You don't know the aura of those fruits. You don't know the energy that those fruits contains. And you eat that and something happens to your light. 
your spiritual structure, something is developing in you. And when some negativity will try to attack you, now you have on your back that energy that you received from that tiny small red apple that you don't know what he contains. You don't know the secret of things, how deep the Creator is, how much is with you. You bought that jacket and you were sure that you're going to wear that jacket for the rest of your life. And after two times that you wore it, that's it. You can't stand it anymore. That's it. You, you must take it off. You have to get rid of it. And it's in your size. It fits you. It suits you. It's perfectly fine. Everything is great. You didn't throw the... the, 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 the how you call that? The, the, no, the, the, the petek, the, the... Oh, the, you mean the, the tag. tag. The tag. You didn't throw the tags yet. It's, it, you, you, and you can't stand that, that jacket anymore. Why? Because it contained certain sparks. That those sparks will belong to you. And after that you wore it once, that's it. You enjoyed that jacket in the way that you were supposed to. And now it's finished. And you have another shirt that it's a rag already. It's something you, you, you don't understand. How come you keep on wearing that same disgusting shirt? You don't understand yourself. It's the only thing that you wear for more than 15 years. And you keep on coming back to the same shirt over and over and over. Only because that this is a certain shirt that is a spring of sparks that are comforting you. That are stabilizing you. And they're hidden in the fabric, and they're hidden in the fibers, and they're hidden in the colors, and, and they're hidden in the ties, and they're hidden in every single detail of the creation. And small bugs can make such a change in the world, and you're not going to know. Our mission is to take our mind and to throw it away and to count on Hashem. To believe in the will of the Creator that is leading us to a better future, to a future of redemption, to an amazing spiritual completion, healing our souls from inside, feeding our soul and our emotional bodies, and giving us certain things that are divine and godly, things that we with our hands cannot touch, cannot reach. And the Creator is doing all of those things in such a hidden way that in a certain moment, suddenly we're going to look to the sides and you're going to say, Hey, the redemption already took place. Mashiach is already walking between us. I saw him once. I met him once. We're talking to him. Here he is and I never thought that it's him. And suddenly the redemption will already be happy. It happened already. You're going to look back and say, Hey, I didn't notice. Mashiach is all in the here. Where, where was I? What's going on? Okay, so what should I do? And you go and you're going to start asking people for an advice and things will start running forward. And we can never know when it's going to happen. It can happen right now. Hayomim bekolot ishmau. Today if you're going to listen to his voice, not listen to his words, listen to his voice. Try to understand the intention of the Creator. He's talking to you and he's got a unique voice that only you can hear. To every single one of us, he's talking through our inner voice. He's got a certain voice that fits you. He's got a certain voice that is talking to your soul. He's using certain phrases and words and, 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 and his vocabulary is similar to yours because he's using yours to teach you. And He's going to reveal certain things to you to wake you up. And you're going to understand them. And the friend that will stand right by you won't see anything. I had a very good friend in the beginning of my tshuva process. When I started coming closer to Hashem, I had a best friend in those days. And I was sure that he's doing tshuva with me. Our understandings in the beginning of our path of awakeness were similar. We were talking so deep, such deep conversations, emotional conversations. We were sharing and opening ourselves one to each other. And after a while, when my journey took me to a place of revealing and understanding things about my religion, 
about the fact that I'm Jewish, about the fact that I feel obligated, that I'm curious to learn more about the Jewish tradition and whatever, he started backing off on me. And I was asking him, but isn't it the right step? Isn't it the, right, the next move? Aren't we doing it together? And he said, no, I don't see that. And for 10 years, he stopped from his journey and he went to make more circles in darkness. He moved to other cities and went and learned some professions and failed in other things that he had to. It was part of his journey. And after something like 10 years, one day I felt so much sorrow. And I already was married with children and learning in the yeshiva. And very deep into Judaism and into, and into learning and spiritual development that I experienced. And one night I felt like um, I, I can't stand that distance from that good friend of mine. And I said to myself, I must make a change in his life. I must do something. I care about him. He, we, we were together. We were one. I must meet him. I must talk to him. And my cow was empty from fuel. I didn't have fuel at all and he lived like one hour away from me so I had to, to, to put some fuel to drive and I didn't have. It was 9.30 p.m. I said to my wife, I must go and, and, and talk to my friend. Kids were asleep already. It was okay. She said, okay, go, but what are you going to do with fuel? She knew the car was empty. I told her, like always, Hashem Yazo, the Creator, He will help us. It will be okay. I went down to the car and I start driving down the hill from my house. I'm making a phone call to another friend. I'm telling him, listen, I, I need 100 shekels if you, can, if you can borrow me, if you can lend, lend me. me. Lend me. So sorry. Lend me. He said, no problem. Where are you? I told him, I'm driving in a street named Yosef Kaho in Jerusalem and, and, and down the hill. Where are you? And he's saying, okay, when you're going to finish Yosef Karo, stop. Because I'm now driving on Shmuel Anavi. It's a, 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 a street that is cutting Yosef Karo. And he said, in one minute I'm there. And I'm stopping my car in front of Shmuel Anavi. And he's stopping his car in front of Rabbi Yosef Karo. And he goes out of the car. I didn't even open the door. He went out from his car. He gave me 200 shekels bill, twice as much as I asked him to. He gave me that money. He told me, you'll have a blessing. I'm sure you're going to succeed. He doesn't know where I'm going. He doesn't know what I'm doing. But he knew me because he's also one of those refugees that I was saving a few years earlier. And <laughs> it was a crazy story. I'll tell you about that as well if you want. He was also a friend of mine from, from school. He was younger than me in a few years, but we were good friends. And one day he was also doing tshuva and he came closer to Hashem. But he lived very far away from the place that I was learning. And he was unemployed and he didn't know what to do with himself. And I told him, okay, come learn with me in the yeshiva. Let's, we'll sit and learn together every day. And he said, look, it's 45 minutes driving every morning and you know how hard it is for me to wake up? For three months, every morning, I would wake up, take my kids to school and drive to Bet Shemesh for 45 minutes, drive to wow. his house, picking him up. One of those, for some of those days I had to wake him up and then pick <laughs> him up and driving. We would pray in Shachrit, we would have an on the way while driving together, coming to the Yeshiva, standing Shmon Eisre, praying. So he knew my Mesirut Nefesh, how much I was ready to give to every person. And if he sees me at 9.30 going out from the house, okay, so have your blessings. And he gave me that money and I drove down to Tel Aviv for one hour drive from Jerusalem. I came to my friend's house, I'm knocking on the door, he didn't know I was there, that, I, that I'm coming. I called him earlier, but he didn't answer. He's opening the door, he sees my face like that, with the beard and the oath and everything. He didn't know what to do. He closed the door, he told me one second, he closed the door. He had to breathe, to relax himself. <laughs> also, he had to close his computer and filthy movies that he was watching at <laughs> the same time. And then he <laughs> opened the door. Him and another friend were sitting over there, waiting for me to come. I came and I, I destroyed them. I 
literally killed all of their evil inclination. It was such a war against those two brains in front of me. They were sitting like two princes from, from Tel Aviv, ready to fight. And <laughs> I tore them to pieces. I destroyed them for something like one hour and a half. He made me coffee and he put milk and the milk was not, I, I don't know, it was very strict back then in those days. And I told him, no, I'm not drinking the coffee. So he was like, whoa, you're not drinking my coffee, you know, whatever. And it was a big, big argument. Today, thank God, this person did tshuva and it took him certain time. But that meeting that I came in that night to his house changed his life completely. And he knows that and I know that it's a, it's a fact, it's a known thing. For an evidence for that thing, after a while, he got married, he was about to get married, he met a certain woman, and he decided that he wants to, to get married with her, she wanted him as well, and they were sitting in a park in Tel Aviv, and they're talking, and he offered her to get married, and she said yes, and they were so happy, and everything was wonderful, and they were excited, and they didn't know who to tell, they wanted to share, they wanted to tell someone. So he, that brilliant friend of mine, he told her, listen, the first person that we're going to see here in the park, we're going to go and tell him that we're getting married. And she said, okay. And suddenly they see a woman walking in the path in the side of the park. And they ran, both of them, hey lady, give it, stop. And they're running to her. And he's looking, it's my mother. <laughs> wow. And he's looking at her and he's saying, what are you doing here? So she told him, I live here. My mother, she lives in Tel Aviv. So I live here. And he told her all the story. And then he said, I knew that it's from heaven. Because I was, I was a symbol for him, for all of his life success, of his change coming out from that darkness that was surrounding him. And when he decided to get married, he was so strong in, in taking that decision. And he felt like he was so complete with it. And then... <coughs> I came again to, to give him a stamp, an evidence for his... That's the power of a person that is following his inner voices. Because I was not a righteous man, I was not a holy man, it was not a divine spirit, it was not a spirit of prophecy, it was nothing. It was just my, my yearning, my desire that my, my friend will, will come back, that we will be friends again, that he will also experience those good experiences that I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying from in life. And, and then when you want to achieve good things, the Creator is providing the tools. He will give you that, what it calls, Si'ata Dishmaya, help from heaven to open the path for you, for a huge success, for success that is above nature, to achieve certain things. I can tell you about nights that I drove literally with no fuel. Sometimes I didn't have fuel and I kept on driving. And for hours I would drive with an empty, I would say, Michal, tank. 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 Driving and driving and driving. And many stories I have because I was always throwing myself deep into the, into the water, not afraid from the winds and from the difficulties. And my wife, she will testify on that, that many, many times we didn't even have money to pay for, for our bills, for our rent, and I was throwing myself. And I'm not recommending other people to throw themselves like me, just to follow your heart and to do what that you feel that your heart is telling you to do without having even money for our basic needs. And I would buy, her ex buy him to my wife expensive gifts and doing things to make her happy that she won't suffer from those challenges and difficulties that we went through in life. And still, thank God, looking for shoes in, <laughs> in other women departments, in all the big stores in LA now. This is the mission of my life, to try to be as honest as I can, as kind as I can, as nice as I can. And through that, the Creator is shining to me, is opening gates to me. Now, you're going to look today and you're going to say, Wow, look, an inspiring speaker is talking, traveling around the world. All of those things are a result. It's not the beginning, that's not who that I am. It's who that I became to be after 18 years, closer to 20 years of tshuva, 
of struggling, of learning the basic rules of Judaism, trying to understand how to wash my hands with a cup in the morning, and if I should do it like you do it for the bread, or that you should do it one hand after the other, and what's the rule, if I should say the blessing on it, or shouldn't say the blessing on it, you say the bracha before or after, all of those rules were foreign for me. If someone would ask me, what's the meaning of the word Mishnah, I didn't know what it means, Mishnah, Gemara. I didn't know what it means, Gemara. Wow. We were learning secular school. We didn't know anything, anything. Shabbat was something that, I don't know, some people, religious people, those clowns, are. I don't know, we, it was nothing for me. It was not belong to my heart at all. If you would offer me to serve Hashem, to be part of a religious system, relig I would laugh. It would be a joke for me. It was not an option. But I was working on myself from an honest place, sincere place, just finding my inner peace. Stop arguing and criticizing myself and hating myself. I felt that I'm walking in such a wrong path in my life that I had all of the time to lie to my friends and to make things behind the back of my parents and also doing things that I don't want to do, like clubbing, dating, going. Many things that I've done in my life, I did it without wanting to do, just because I was scared, I was afraid, I was worried, I didn't know, I didn't have anything else to do with my life. And I felt that emptiness, it was, it was eating me from inside. And one day I said, hey, you must stop, because you're killing yourself, you're doing things against your will. You're taking drugs against your will, and you're smoking, and you're, you're taking pills, and you're drinking too much, and waking up with crazy headaches, and, 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 and don't remember how you found yourself waking up in that house or in that car. Certain things that many of us experience in our lives, and I felt so wrong. I felt that something is wrong. So my journey started in some place that most of the people can relate themselves to. To understand that really that path started in, a, it's not normal, but for us in the world today, it's a normal place. It's not the place of the righteous ones. It's not the place of the scholars. It's not the place of the holy ones. It's the regular world with the pubs and the clubs and the forests and, and the sports and the TV and the videos and, and food and barbecue and the beach and driving jeeps and motorcycles and all of those things were not stopping me and holding me back from reaching that place that I'm holding today that it's very, very different than that place that I was hanging out in 20, or 20 years ago or more. It's very different. But my journey started over there. When my father came to me after the wedding and he looked at me and he told me, I'm looking at you and I see that you, I only see your tzitzit. I was wearing my tzitzit on top of my shirt like that and it was all outside. And he told me, where are you? I look at you and I see only your tzitzit. I told him, because, because you're looking at my tzitzit. Look at me. It's me. Today, the one that I am today is still me. It's still the same person that was walking in Jerusalem 20 years ago. I'm the same one. I changed my habits. I'm doing different things. I'm thinking differently. I worked on many of my patterns on my emotional body. I healed myself. Hashem helped me. Millions of things changed in my life, but it's me. I'm not divided by making that change from who that I was before. So also you, also every person out there doesn't need to change. Just need to find his true self. And then he will grow from his point, from his place, to a very high and spiritual place that he is not even aware of. I never knew, I couldn't dream even on achieving certain things that I know today that I achieved. Even those things that I achieved five years ago that looks tiny to me compared to the things that I'm achieving today. But I couldn't even think that one day it will take place in my life. And for an evidence for that, one friend of mine once took me, a different one, another one that I need to help today. I'm, it doesn't give no access. I don't know what to do with it. But Hashem will help. 
one of the days he took me to a certain Rabbitson, and I and and she was very wise, very gifted, and I was sitting in her place in her house, and she told me, you know that in one year and a half from today you're going to be religious. So, except of being terrified and scared, and my hands start shaking, maybe first time in my life, I was terrified completely, and I had a, 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 a small deck of, 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 of business cards of hell, something that was, put, that was on the table, and I was playing with it, and immediately when she told me, in one year and a half, you're going to be religious, all of those cards fell on the floor. I was so scared, I couldn't handle it. And I was picking them up and being embarrassed and don't know what she's saying. And I knew like, a, like a, 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 a sharp knife into my heart those words penetrated. And I told her, what do you mean religious? So she said, religious. So I told her, okay, maybe you mean that I'm going to believe more in Hashem, that I'll have more faith. And she's saying, no, 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 I mean white shirt, black pants, a beard. <laughs> Keeping all the home, it's about. And I was terrified. I went back home after that meeting just crying. And I was crying to Hashem because I had faith, but I didn't want to be religious. I cried to Hashem. I told him, Why are you doing that to me? I begged him to stop. But he didn't. He's more stubborn than me. <laughs> it's crazy sometimes to think how stubborn Hashem is. He never gives up on us. And he woke me up from one step to the other, from one level to the next. And I was crying, I was refusing, I didn't want it. The challenge of talking to my parents about it, of telling people, it was so hard. It was so hard, it was so, it was so foreign, it was so against our culture, it was so against our, our house, our, 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 our life. I stopped going with my family to certain restaurants and to be able to eat with them and to drive to the beach in Shabbos and doing certain things with them. It became so hard and they were fighting with me and most of those arguments were very empty, were only like expressing the ignorance and the lack of understanding from both sides. I was arguing and I was not thinking right and they were... But in all of that path I was always trying to connect myself to my inner truth and to be honest about it. And not to try to change and to be radical religious or to be whatever. Only to be honest and to say my real opinion, to express my emotions, my real feelings, and to go with it all the way. And not to surrender to my fears or to my environment fears. And that path took me to a very, very beautiful place that I'm spending my life today in. And this is the reason that I'm telling all of that. That when you, every person in the world, looking at yourselves and you're saying, okay, look, he's different. He's a speaker. He learned years in yeshiva. He's wise. He's talented. He's gifted. All of those things I'm telling you, it's nonsense. You're not aware to where you're going to be in 20 years to criticize yourselves on where you are today. If you're going to attach yourselves to the point of truth of your heart, you can become prophets in 20 years. You can become prophets in 5 years. I don't know what will happen with you, but you can be sure that the Creator Himself, the one that is above nature, will shine your soul from within in a way that will be so magnificent, so beautiful, so great, that you will be so inspired and satisfied from your own life. And the proof for that is that my life today won't make you happy. To drive with my wife and my five children in our car from one side of the United States to the other side won't make you happy like that it makes me happy. You need the salvation in your house. You need the salvation with your family, with your beloved ones. You need miracles to take place in your living room, on that sofa, with those walls, to change those furnitures. You have issues that are surrounding you. So the light of the Creator that is shining upon me is not the one that will heal you. So you don't need me. You need Him. You need Him to shine into your lives. 
into your houses, into your families, to your circles, to your communities, to your companies, that you will feel the presence of the Creator in your own life. That's why you, and that's the proof, that like that I was dedicated and very, very strong and stubborn on fighting and going deep into the roots of my souls, and then I found that inner spring of wisdom coming from within, if you will do the same, you will find yours, and the water will be much more tasty for you. It will be more delicious. They will satisfy you more because it's going to belong to you. It will be yours. It will be your wonders. It will be your good news. It will be your dreams coming true. It will be your hopes being answered, your prayers being answered. Those fantastic miracles can take place in the life of every single one of us with no connection to his abilities and his skills and his power and his age and his agenda and his nation and his accent and his face and whatever and his fortune. With no connection to all of those physical terms of your life, aspects of your life, you can become spiritual. You can become connected to who that you are from within. And then through your soul, you will enjoy light that will come through your individual channel. And you will find an advice how to deal with your family. And you will have the wisdom how to deal with those challenges that are surrounding you. And you will find happiness in eating and drinking and meeting your friends and going out and learning. If you're going to learn the books that I learned, you won't find satisfaction in that learning. There are different books that are interesting you. You going to my classes today, I was going to listen to another rabbi 20 years ago. And if you would hear him, probably you wouldn't even understand what he was talking about. But he was the one for me back then. And now I'm the right one for you today. And tomorrow you can find someone that will take you to the next level and it will be great. Because you need to follow your heart. You need to follow your honesty. Who am I and what do I want really to achieve from life and with which challenges I should really face and, and deal with and take responsibility and how I'm going to be honest with my family, with my beloved ones. What should I do to work on myself? One should get rid of his bad temper, one on his sadnesses, one on his jealousy, one on his lust and desires. Everyone needs to work on something and we're all different. But when you will connect yourself to that source of life, you're not alive because you're eating, you're not alive because you're drinking or because you're wearing a certain suit. You're alive because you have an inner spark of life that is shining from inside. That's why you're alive. And when you're going to focus in that light, that light will shine more. And suddenly you're going to heal from more things. With more powers, you're going to find yourself dealing with life. Suddenly, you're going to have more wisdom. You're going to have more ability to reach your senses. Your awareness is going to grow. Your ability to communicate with people is going to develop. You're going to find yourself running conversations on different scales, on different levels, with different people. Suddenly, you're going to be open. My wife is a very humble and quiet person. And for years, she was not talking. For years she was barely talking, but I didn't even know this back then. But she was listening. Today, thank God, she received a mouth that you cannot stop. <laughs> Something like wild. And she remembers everything. And she tagged everything under the right title. And everything is organized in her mind. And she was sitting quiet and listening. Something like... Like what you're doing for the last five classes. <laughs> Sitting and listening and learning and observing. And a few times I asked her, but you were not like this, like you are now, but you were not like this. She said, no, no, I was always like that, but I was not expressing my heart. I was not sharing my emotions. I was not sure yet. She was thinking, she was processing. But if you just sit even just being quiet and learning and observing and thinking, you're going to grow. 
She's so wise today and it's not empty words. It's not compliments to her. She, she doesn't listen to my videos anyway. So <laughs> it's all great. The truth is that she got that ability because of being who that she was, even though that it, she chose not to express herself and not to get into the, okay, you want to be religious, okay, you want to learn, okay, you want to teach, do, she let me ha do whatever I wanted. She was supporting me, she loved me, everything great. She was working on herself. She was finding herself in that path. She was focusing in her, her own heart. So the real recipe for success is just to be truthful. It's just really to listen to your heart, to work on your awareness to your senses, to your emotions. If you have a bad feeling about a certain class, about a certain rabbi, about a certain method, about a certain synagogue, a certain community, if you, don't, you feel like, no, it's too tight over there, it's too strict over there, it's, something is fishy, something is wrong, I don't know, I don't... Something smells bad. I don't want to work in that company. I don't know. Something looks... You cannot ignore those feelings. You must listen to your senses because Hashem, the Creator, is using your senses to guide you. Those are the tools that the Creator is using to wake you up. How do you want to be warned from something if not by being afraid, by being scared, by feeling certain feeling about... Okay, so now you felt it? Okay, so think. What that feeling means? Why is it coming? Why every time that I'm talking about a certain subject I feel rejected? Why every time I have a certain opportunity I feel like I shouldn't do it? Why I'm receiving those cold feet? Sometimes it's going to wake you up to, 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 to be careful and to watch over yourself. And sometimes it's just going to wake you up to understand that you're too scared to deal with success, with good news, with amazing opportunities. But that fear will wake you up to work on those things that are inside of you that are making you so scared. And you're going to find your inner child. You're going to find that child that is suffering from trauma from his childhood. Don't want to be rejected again. And don't want to be insulted again. And don't want to be humiliated again. And then you're going to find your true self. And then you're going to understand yourself. Oh, that's why I'm afraid of relationship. Oh, that's why I'm afraid to invest money. Oh, that's why I'm afraid to wake up in the mornings. That's why I'm always running late. Or that's why I'm always waking up first and far, far, before of everyone else. You're going to find the reason to who that you are. You're going to understand why you are who that you are. But for that, you must stop arguing with yourself and criticizing yourself and destroying your own self-esteem. You must become your own best friend. That's the first step. Not in Judaism, in life. To find yourself. To be who that you are. Who that the Creator made you to be. You know what? Even without the Creator in the picture, just that's who you are. And there's nothing to do with it. With <coughs> except of making the most that you can with who that you are. Now you also have faith in life. Great. Talk to Hashem about it. Tell Him, wake me up to understand who am I. You can pray. But you can also think. It doesn't have to be the path of those righteous ones. It doesn't have to be so gigantic and, 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 and enormous. It can be simple life of choosing the right flavor for your cup of tea, not drinking coffee if you feel that it's too heavy for you in the morning, and develop your self-awareness to your body to choose the right food, what to eat in the morning and in which time. And if before of making some sport, or maybe sport is not so good for you, you tried it so many times and it just drains your power even worse, bringing you to a lower level, and, and you find yourself exhausted in the middle of the day, maybe sport is not good for you. Even that there are people that are saying that sports save their lives, but we're different. And only if you will find your ability to listen to your own thoughts, to the light of your own soul, you will be able to be who that you are. And then you will be happy. Because the reason, the main reason for our sorrow in life 
is the fact that we feel that we disappointed ourselves, that we betrayed ourselves, that I was not protecting myself, that I was not who that I am. That is the biggest disappointment of us from our own lives, that we were not who that we could have been. But if you're going to go back and investigate those hard hours, that in those hours you really gave up on yourself, you decided to quit, you decided to, 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 to break down and cry, you decided to lie, you decided to cheat. Horrible things that you think that you did in life. I'm asking you, please, be brave. Face yourself and open that discussion. Ask yourself, why was I sinning? Why was I betraying myself? Why did I do those horrible things that destroyed my own childhood, my own life? Why I ruined that relationship? Why I had to lie? Why I couldn't be honest? Face that question. Deal with the truth, with your embarrassment. And I can swear to you that if you will do that without criticizing yourself, just really, you will want to find the real reason for your failures, you will see a scared child that didn't have another advice, that was just looking for warmth and love and was terrified not to be loved and to be rejected. That's who that you were when you were committing the worst sins of your life. That will be your answer, that you are not guilty, that you're innocent. And the Creator is looking at you with those eyes. That's the eyes of truth. Those are the eyes of truth. That's the right way to judge yourself, to judge yourself favorably. To judge yourself favorably is not a way in life. It's not a method. It's not an attitude. It's the only way to achieve the truth. The Creator made a world that holds a straight path of truth that is all good and beautiful and innocent and pure. And there are a bunch of lies that are covering that golden path. Lies of your low self-esteem, of your negative thoughts, of the negative thoughts of other people, of people that are holding certain roles in life to be your enemies, to be your, 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 your fears, to represent the dark side of your life, the frightening side of your life. But all of those are just shading on the real connection that you have to the truth. And the truth is that you are a holy, gentle, sensitive, pure soul that is struggling and trying to find an outlet in life, trying to find security, trying to find joy, trying to find comfort, trying to find peace, wealth, understanding, love, kindness. You are very simple and gentle, pure, drop of holy water. That's who that you are. You're a holy soul that came down from heaven to visit in this impure, dark, thick world full with imaginations, darknesses, curtains, husks, and coverings that are blocking the light of infinity of the world of beyond. So that's why you had to come down to this world covered with physical body, with a certain parents, with a certain accent, with this, from a certain nation, with a certain color of your skin, with a certain color of eyes, with a certain shape of your face and your body and height and weight and size and on. And you had to learn in a certain school and with certain people because your challenge is to seek and find the truth in that path in your zone, in your area, in your life. And when you're going to do that, you will be able, you'll have a certain control to increase the level of light in your inner channels and the purity and the light and the wisdom that will rise from within will wash your environment.
and will purify your beloved ones. And another positive thought of yours is going to heal another person. And another good word of yours is going to save the life of your best friend. And another good manners and good behavior of yours can make huge changes in the wide world. Like we said, if you will make one more step today. Today you don't need to live in 20 years from today. Today you need to live with the Creator. Where is He? Here. Okay, what do I need to do with Him to say the truth? Hashem Elokechem Emet. You need to be honest. Hashem, your God, is the God of truth. When you're saying the truth, you're with Him. You're united with Him. You and Him are one. But when you're lying, a liar person, a lying person cannot stand in front of Hashem. Hashem cannot stand lies. Because lies are blocking him. Because he's the God of truth. So as long as you're lying to yourself, lying to your friends, lying to all of your beloved ones, even from the best reason in the world, you're scared, you're afraid, you don't want them to leave you. The reason that you think that if you gonna say the truth, they're going to leave you, is because you don't understand how huge is the power of truth. Because the real truth is that when you're going to say the truth, they're going to love you so much more. They're going to appreciate you so much more. They will find the power to accept you and to continue and to hug you. They won't reject you. The only one that is rejecting you is that snake. Those negative thoughts in the back of your mind that are telling you, if you're going to say the truth, they're not going to love you. So he is attempting you to lie. But it's a lie. They're going to love you only if you're going to say the truth. They're going to hate the fact that you're lying if you're going to keep on lying. Because they're catching you on your lies. And you're failing because you can't remember the amount of lies that you lied until today. Because no one can count those lies. Because there is nothing that's going to help you to remember. Because they're melting and disappearing. Because they don't have real existence in reality. Because they're fake. So you cannot lie forever. And Hashem is doing all of that in purpose, embarrassing you and exposing you and revealing you and again and again and again, only to wake you up to say the truth, to say, I'm a liar. I lied, I'm sorry. I was so afraid, I didn't know what to do and I'm sorry. And I know that I messed up big time and I'm apologizing. I don't know what to do. Excuse me, I'm sorry, forgive me, I'm begging. When you're going to do that, what have you done? Tshuva! And what does it mean, Tshuva? There is a verse. Am Israel, the nation of Israel, cannot be redeemed with no other advice except of Tshuva. Those are the words of that verse. En Israel nigalin ela al yedei Tshuva. Only when they're doing Tshuva. And when they're doing Tshuva, immediately they're being redeemed. Immediately. I'm talking immediately. Just do Tshuva. Come back. Where to what? To Hashem. Oh, but Hashem is in the heights. No, Hashem is the truth. When you say the truth, you're with Hashem. You don't get it. Hashem is not over there. He's not in Zion. He's not in the Holy Land. No, Hashem is with you. He's all over the place. There is no place without Hashem. When you are saying the truth, when you're being honest, when you're being sincere and sensitive and kind, Kind because it's the truth to be kind, not because it's good attributes, people are going to respect you more. No! In reality, that's the purpose of, that's who that you really want to be. Don't you want to be nice? You do! You're just too scared to be nice. Oh, you need to play tough, you need to play hard to get and whatever. You're scared. You're scared to be who that you are. Your true self, I, that's what I saw in life, that's my life experience. That your true self is modest. In ways that are deeper than long sleeves and covering your head. You're modest in your nature. You want to be pure. You want to be married only with one person. You want to have only one loving relationship in one home. You want to be protected. You want to be loved and to love. You want to give and you want to receive. You want to influence warmth and support and understanding. And you also want to enjoy the love that your beloved ones have... To, to, to share and to spread to you. You're an innocent human being. And not only people are like that. 
Also the animals, also the flowers, the trees, the weather, the nature, the creation. That is the nature's character and nature. That's who the, the Creator made us to be. Similar to Him. We are His face. And He's also hurt. And He's also been rejected by us. And He's also in the exile. And He also can't find a place for Himself. And He also and also and also. And we need to come back to Him. And He said, when you're going to come back to Me, I'm going to come back to you. And when we will complete our tshuva, going to come back to Him completely. Come back to the truth. Not acting religious. Not acting Hasidish. Being honest. Your honesty will lead you to the path of truth. You're going to find yourself carving the way into the truth of your own soul. One will speed up and very fast will learn Torah. Another person will work on his attributes and the main focus of his life will be on not screaming at his wife, not hitting his children anymore, not drinking alcohol till the middle of the night with his friends. It doesn't matter what is your challenge. You need to start in the point that the Creator woke you up to start serving Him, to be aware to His present, to the fact that He lives inside of you. And now from that embarrassing place that you're holding, to tshuva, come back to Hashem. And when we're going to complete our tshuva, means going to do that effort that I just described with all of our power, means we will want to do it with our holy desire, with our wishing soul. When we're going to do that, the Creator will show us wonders. He will come back to us. He will show you those secrets that we spoke about them before. That that fruit contains the healing of your life. That this drink is the potion that is protecting you from many, many, many germs and viruses that are flying in there. And you don't know. You think, oh, Coca-Cola is poison. You don't know. It's poison, but you can clean and scrub your, your, your sink with it. So there are many things that you can do with it all. <laughs> don't you watch YouTube? Are you crazy? You know what you can do with Coke in these days? Open your eyes, you don't understand. Sometimes coke can kill you, someone coke can heal you. People with stone, kidney stones, if they're drinking coke, three, four, five bottles, they're gonna throw that stone by itself. You don't need to go to the doctor. Crazy pains, kidney stones, crazy pains. You buy three, four bottles of coke, Pepsi, coke, whatever, you drink all of them, it's out. It's out! Because it dissolves it. You put a penny it in It dissolves a everything a that exists in the universe. Of course it's going to dissolve the stones in the it kidneys. Everything. So it can become a medicine and a potion to save your life from crazy pain. And you don't know it. But one day the Creator puts a bottle of coke on your table and you don't know that you have tiny stones in your kidneys. You're not aware to. They're not painting. That doesn't make you scream yet. But you're drinking another cup and another cup and another cup and you don't know what Hashem is doing. And then what are you doing? Instead of thanking Hashem on what He's doing with you, you're blaming yourself on drinking so much coke. Oh, I'm so fat, I'm destroying my teeth, I'm not taking care of my health, what am I doing? You're just not listening to your inner voice. Are you always drinking coke? Maybe you have a cons consistent problem with, with something. Maybe Hashem is waking you up. Okay, so if you're going to develop your self-awareness and you're going to start sense and feel your body, you will be able to deal with your problems in ways that will be less radical than have to drink four bottles of Coke. But you will work on yourself because you became aware to yourself. So you will eat vegetables that are green. Suddenly you're going to decide to eat bread that made only from whole wheat. Whatever. You're going to find answers to your issues. 
One is sensitive to dairy, one is sensitive to gluten, one sensitive to certain weather. I have a friend that was suffering from allergies in the South, in Texas, and he had to move to Miami. He moved to Miami, no more allergies. What can you say about that? No one can give you that prescription. No one can tell you that that's the answer. But something called him to go to Miami, found himself in Miami, no allergies anymore. Why? Because Hashem wants you to stay in Miami. Because you have a job to be who that you are in Miami. And nothing in the world would bring you to Miami. Not the beaches, not the communities, nothing would bring you to Miami. Except of your horrible allergies that were eating you in Texas. And Hashem, He knows. The nose, He knows. Hashem, He knows. He can smell you. He knows exactly what you need and what is required for your path. So our job from our side is only to listen. To listen to the inner voice of our souls that is calling us from within. Come closer to me. Come closer to me. I'm your father. I'm your soul. I'm your light. I'm your healing. I'm your therapy. I'm your love. I'm your confidence. I'm everything you need. Hashem is saying, Tov Hashem lakol. Hashem is good for everything and His mercy, berachamav, al kol maasav, is ready for all of His creations. All of them. The meaning of the word mercy is to give something to someone even if he's not worthy. The Creator will give you even when you're not worthy. He doesn't care about worthy or not worthy. He wants to give. You just need to have a vessel. The words of your prayer, your humility, those are the vessels to contain the godly bounty. Just to enjoy, to spread your arms in prayer, to say, Hashem, I'm not able to wake up in the morning. You don't need to pray about the heights. You need to pray about the mornings. I can't go to sleep at night without smoking weed, help me not to smoke weed. Everyone with these issues. Thank God I get rid of so many bad habits already, only because I was able to talk about those things. But you have people that cannot go to sleep without smoking. You have those people, thousands in LA, in the world. People can go to sleep. And you know what? Judge yourself on it. Why? Ask yourself why you're so terrified. Why you can't sleep. Why you need to see another movie and another clip and another Facebook for two and a half hours. Why you're draining yourself and destroying your mind. What you're afraid of. What are those thoughts that you're so scared to deal with? Deal with them. It's too much for you? Okay, great. Take a break. Take a long breath. Go to the park. Breathe. Think. Say to Hashem, look, it's way too hard for me to deal with those thoughts. It can take me to horrible places that I'm not able to go deep and down into. Please, give me more strength, give me more power. I'm willing to do what you want me to do, but it's too much for me for now. Help me and go and buy a nice burger and a cup of beer or coke and move on with your life to the next step. Because you don't need to harvest the success of five years of today, from today right now. You need to make another step today to express your heart in one more aspect today. To say to Hashem, please help me. I don't know how to deal with that trauma. With that embarrassment, I don't have a clue. I don't have no understanding how to deal with my fears, with my anxieties. And when you will be honest about those things that are driving you crazy, you will see that the light of truth will shine on those aspects of your life. And suddenly the darkness won't be scary as it was one hour before. A little bit more light, a little bit more compassion, a little bit more understanding of you on yourself. You will be able to live with yourself a little bit more, to bear yourself, to accept yourself, to love yourself, to forgive yourself. That's the secret of tshuva, to give yourself a chance to start again. 
to make another step toward the future, to a better future. Thank you very much. Be blessed. Chazak Baruch. Emuna Project is a non-profit organization that makes wonders in the world. I'm the co-founder of that amazing organization. Help us, support us. We have a non-profit 501c3. You can receive your taxes back if you're going to support us with your donations. We can change lives of people. We're saving lives around the world. I had an interview a few days ago with, um, what's her name? Talmudic, um, the, um, what's the name of the page? Sell accident. Oh, accidental Talmudist. Accidental Talmudist. My Sell and Sal Litvak, Litvak and, and, and Nina. Nina Litvak, the and very Nina. close friends of mine. And while he was interviewing me, a person from Morocco wrote on his Facebook page, that person, that Raf saved my life. I never met him. He watched my videos, and those videos saved his life. I told it's him to not, interview you. It's not me. By the way, thank you. It was me. It's not me. It's not me. It's the hand of Hashem that is providing the right message to the right people in the right time in their lives. While we're doing things in our daily hours, daily things that we're doing every day, Hashem is taking those videos and sending them to random people, supervising on certain short clips. A person is coming to me two days ago, he said, I'm thinking about something and suddenly I'm receiving your video that is answering my problems to my phone. Hashem is sending those messages. Hashem is helping us all to wake up. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.